Okay, in this video we're going to look at how to work with variables that are numbers and also how to do some basic calculations with those numbers, so add, subtract, etc. So uh, I have a math variables AIA file open that is available for download with uh, the information on this video. And if you wanted to open it up and follow along, it might be helpful. So just a quick overview of how I have this set up so far. So I have a vertical arrangement set up that has inside of it a table. And my table consists of two text boxes, right, to get input from the user. So I've named this one number A, and I've named this one number B. And then I have a result label here, which I've named result label. So the result that we get when we do our math calculation in here will appear in this label. And then I have button one. Now remember, we want to always make sure that we rename our components to be meaningful. So instead of button one, I'm going to rename this to add, and I also like to use BTN at the end so that when I'm quickly looking at it, I can recognize that it's a button. So what we're gonna do is get the number from number A and the number from number B, and when we click the add button to add the two together and put them into this text label. So that is the goal for this. So let's move over into the blocks mode. So we don't have any code blocks set up yet. The first thing we want to do is to get a variable and put the value from number A into that variable. And then we'll do the same thing with number B. So I'm going to create two variables. We go to the variable blocks grab a global name to initialize and instead of name again we want to make this more meaningful so I'm going to call this box A and I want to initialize it to a zero so to get a number I can come into math and grab a zero block now if I wanted it to be something different for some reason I could just click in here and change that to a zero now I want another variable, so I'm just going to duplicate this, and you can see that it gives me box A2. I'm just going to call this box B. So we've got two variables, box A and box B. Now the process is going to be, when we click the plus sign, we want to get num a, number A and put that into our variable. We're going to get the number out of here and put that into our other variable and then add them up and put the result in here. So we'll need an event handler for the add button. So I'm going to click on add button and we want this to happen when the button is clicked. So I'll grab the add button click event and we're going to change the value of box A to whatever is in the text box for num number A. So to change the value of box A, we need to hover over here and get a set block. Remember set allows us to change the value. So I'm going to set A to, now I don't want to use an exact number, I just want to get the value of what's in the text box. So I can come to number A text box over here and get the value. And we do that by saying number A dot text. Right? That gives us the value of what's in that text box. Now we want to do the same thing for box B. And again, I could come over here and follow the same steps. But a quick thing to do is just duplicate this whole block and change this to box B and change this to number B. So now when the add button is clicked 
we get the values of what are in the text boxes and update them in our variable value. Now the next thing is to add these up and put the result into the result label. So let's say result label, let's set the result label text to And to add, we're going to go to the math block, grab a plus sign. Right now, before we used set blocks to change the value, in here we want to get the two values and add them together. So I can grab a set, a get block from just hovering over our variable and say get A and get box B. So now we want to test it. So let me pause this and set this up so that we can see our app in action. Okay, and we'll put a number in for A. And then we'll put another in for B. Now notice that it this is kind of extra steps in here. It shows me the text keyboard, and then I have to go to the number keyboard. So I'll show you a way to set up your app so that this doesn't happen to your users. So I have five and eight, and I'm gonna click the plus sign, and there is our result. So then I can come back here and change that to another number. You always want to test it multiple ways to make sure that it works the way you expect it to. Alright, so now as we said, when it's this first started, it had, it said hint for text A and hint for B. And so I'm going to click on my first text box, number A, and you can see that it says hint, hint for text box one. So we could take that out completely if you don't want anything in there, um, or you can say something like, I want to keep it short, so I'm just going to say a number. And then, see where it says numbers only? If I check that off, then you'll see when we click in that text box, the keyboard that pops up is gonna be numbers only. So that can also help to make sure, or help to ensure that you're getting number values and not text values. So I'm gonna do the same thing on the B. I'm gonna change this to a number and numbers only. All right, and then let's come back to, there we go. So now you can see we have our hint. And if I tap in here, now we just have numbers. Much easier for the user to enter something. And then we'll do add, and there is our result. So that's basic addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, would all work the same way, so you could go on to add in the other blocks in there for those and just set up another button click and change your math block in here to match if you're doing subtraction, multiplication, or division. Now there's one math operation that might be not that familiar to you. It's called modulo. And let's test out the modulo. So I'm going to go back here to screen one. I'm sorry. So I'm going to go back to my designer view. And I'm going to add another button. And this is going to be modulo BTN. And the text on it is going to be a percent sign symbol. Right? The symbol for modulus uses percent sign. And let me just make this a little bigger and give it a different background color. Right, and then in the blocks mode, 
Again, basically I'm going to do the same thing that the add button is, except we're going to be changing what, what it's doing with the two numbers. So I'm going to duplicate this whole block. And now you can see I have an error. And you can't have multiple event blocks for the same button. So we can't have two add button click events because it doesn't know how to distinguish them. So if you have anything that's going to be done in your button, they all need to be in the same event block. But this one we want to use for the modulo. So I'm just going to switch this to modulo. We're still going to get the number from the number A and the number B and change those to our variables. We're still going to set the result label text, but we need to do a different math calculation. So I'm just going to slide this out, come back up to math, and we're going to grab the modulo of and we're going to snap that in and we're going to say box A divided by box B. So modulo takes the first number and it divides it by the second number and then what it does is it returns the remainder like how many is left. So let's test this out and just kind of see what we get. All right, so um, let's try 32 and 5. So it's going to take 32 and divide it by 5. And when I tap the modulo button, right, our result is 2. Because 32 divided by 5 is 6. Well, 6 times 5 is 30 and then there's two left. This is our remainder, two. So sometimes there are times when you're doing calculation and you wanna get what's left over after you do a division, and that is called modulo. So I encourage you to go back in, add in the subtraction, multiplication, division, get those to work, and then try some other more complex math calculations and test them out.